Are you ready? The station leading the way with exclusive interviews, stimulating conversation, and intellectual discourse that empowers, enlightens, and informs. Follow the leader at KBLA 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Keep following the leader. Follow the leader, follow the leader, follow the leader, follow the leader. You ready? It's the queen of royal badness. Badness. It's time for the Rob Report with Robin A. Highlighting people and things you should know about. Robin's got you covered. Woo! Follow Robin at Robin Ayers. You're listening to the Rob Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Robin's got a lot to talk about. Inside the Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580, where we bring you the latest in entertainment news, trending topics, and interviews. I am your host, Robin Ayers, and I'm with you guys Monday through Friday. I'm sorry I wasn't with you yesterday, but I was in town. I'm back today, though. I'm back today, though. <laughs> so good to be back with you guys. Andy said he's playing this because it's a Robin Ayers classic. I guess I pulled this out on one of our little battles, one of our little uh, versus battles one time. Okay. Well, it's, it's a nice way to start the start the day. Thanks, Andy. We appreciate that. Um, thank you. I've missed you, too. I see you guys coming up into our YouTube. I appreciate that so much. And I know, I know that you are here early because you can't wait for today's conversation. Just like I can't wait for today's conversation, you can't wait for today's conversation. Um, listen, it is going to be a great one. I am so excited about who I have here in studio. So I'm not even going to hold you. I don't want to give you any updates we're going to get straight to the conversation because she took her time coming all the way here to Lamert Park. Um, you guys have known her and her work for quite some time. Um, she is a television writer. She's a producer, a storyteller. And um, you know her from Born Again Virgin. You know her from, uh, there's so much, um, Act Your Age. And of course, the recently highly debated Good Times animated reboot. Uh, she hails from Chicago, Illinois. Both Renata Shepard and her husband, Devon Shepard, are gurus in this business. Let me tell it. They're gurus. They are veterans in this business, um, have produced and written for some of your very favorite shows. Uh, let me not hold you any longer, please. She's a friend of mine. That's probably most important. She's yes. my dear, dear friend. She's my girl. Please re welcome Renata Shepard to the Raw Report. Thank you, Robin Ayers. Thank you, Shep. How are you today? I'm pretty good. You well, know? yeah, you, you you look good. Well, thank you. Okay, that's so for starters. Girl, new color. Appreciate Come on that. Now. You know, I'm trying to get in the Honey family blonde. like you. <laughs> I see you <laughs> trying to get in your family, you know, um, hope y'all like the hair. It is. That's right. I forgot. It is my debut of, come on, you know, a feeling springish okay, summer. Just let that go like that. Mm -hmm. We got to present it. Yeah, we got to, <laughs> we got to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Renata, I am so glad that you have made it in today. Um, I know that you have been doing a lot of press. You've been doing a lot of work. Yes. We will absolutely get to good times because yes. we're here to discuss good times. As you know, everybody wants to discuss good times. Uh, Andy, what's up? Okay, so um, oh, awesome. I can't wait to talk about good times. I'll let you guys uh, hear the trailer in just a little bit. But I, the reason I want to go backwards, mm -hmm. I want to talk about your 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 upbringing a little bit, mm -hmm. but also you know your career because people, you know, it's rare. You know, when we watch television, Renata, you know, TV shows, movies, or whatever, mm -hmm. you see the people in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Hardly ever do you know about or uh, you know hear about the people who are in the background yeah. making things happen and, mm -hmm. and what they uh, what they bring to the table. So you come from Chicago, but South you side. South Side Chicago. So you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but you made your way here to Los Angeles, California, via uh, Vegas. Via Vegas. Via Vegas. Yes, left Chicago for college. Went to UNLV. Uh, and then decided I didn't want to go back to Winters, but I also didn't want to work in the hotel industry. Mm -hmm. So I applied for an internship at Edmonds Entertainment. It was Babyface and Tracy Edmonds' company at the mm -hmm. time uh, when they were married. 
And my first intern boss was Devon Franklin. The Devon Franklin. The Devon Franklin. And let Who me was tell not, you, by the way, the Devon Franklin at the time, was he? No. Okay. But still had his life together. Yeah. I was like, how? Yeah. Like, yeah. we're the same age. He's like, so what's your purpose? Uh, excuse me, sir? <laughs> you talking purpose? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know if I'm going to finish college these last six months. Like, purpose? <laughs> right. Yeah, so he's always had it together. Oh, always. And so um, actually met my husband. Uh, from him, we were at a holiday party, and he said, come sit in between the two Devons. So you have Devon Franklin to thank yes. for Devon Shepherd, Or blame, depending on which day of the week it is. <laughs> well said, well said. I'll say thank, because, you know, Devon is no, my boy. Absolutely right? Of course, thank. of course. We'll be yeah. married 20 years this year Wow, in October. Wow, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And so Devon Shepherd, whom I, you know, talked about when I was introducing you, was already in the business? Oh, my gosh. She's been writing for at least 33, 34 years. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So you literally were surrounded by... Legends. Legends, legends. And so were you, did you know at that point that you wanted to venture into what you're doing today? No, I thought I was going to produce, um, which was the basis for the internship to get into development and production mm -hmm. and ended up sitting on the desk of the in-house counsel at Edmonds and he was managing Vincent D'Onofrio. They wanted to start a production company and they asked me to be their junior development exec. I was like, say less. Okay. I get my own office furniture. I'm picking my paint. Wow. Like, I have made it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was it at that point. That was it. That was it. Yeah. And we went to New York. We made a film. It was Vincent's directorial debut. Um, and after the film was over, we got back to L.A. Mm -hmm. Now, his business partner was also his manager. So I'm thinking, I'm a movie producer now. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got my credit, right? We get back. Yes. This man is like, um, so did you schedule his car service? Oh. I don't want to manage. <laughs> right. Yes. You learned that quickly. That's yeah. a whole career. Yes, I don't want to manage. Yeah. And then I think he asked me to alphabetize his CDs. And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> That's how long ago that was. It was CDs. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, no. Mm, mm -hmm. It's not for me. And I quit. Um, and <laughs> at the time, Devon and I had just married. I came home and I was like, look. I have a lot of amazing ideas. You're mm -hmm. a writer. I'm a producer. Mm -hmm. Let's be a power couple. You can write these for me. I mean, what? Yes. You see the vision, right? <laughs> Absolutely right. You know my husband, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so he politely said, hell no. Um, and I was like, you're mean because we go together. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> we go and together. I thought that like held some weight, but mm -hmm, it didn't. Mm -hmm. And he told me that writers didn't want to write other people's ideas. Unless they were getting paid for it. Mm. I mean, I thought I was in a position where I wasn't considered just other people's ideas. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. <laughs> um, so I took his phone, got the writer's contacts out of his phone, and set up lunches. And met with tons of writers and came back in tears and was like, you're right. Nobody wants to write my stuff. Mm. And he was like, you're a scared writer. Stop being scared and go learn how to write. Because you're going to be mad that these ideas never came to be. Mm -hmm. And I um, was so angry with him at the time. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for his no. Yeah. Because I did that. Ended up with my first draft uh, of a script through this program called Writer's Boot Camp in Santa Monica from Jeff Gordon. Another guy out of Chicago, Illinois. Mm. A very successful program that he runs. And from there, um, Devon's manager was like, this is actually really good. Let's shop it. And it didn't sell, but it was enough support for me to continue to believe in myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I was like, now what? And they were like, go write more scripts. I was like, <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, you're a writer now. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. And uh, thank God that's what I did. And I was trying to figure out how to get in a writer's room. Right. Like, yeah. how do I become a writer's assistant, a showrunner's assistant who will hire me? And then I don't want them to be like, oh, that's Devon's wife. You know, all Absolutely, of that. Yeah. I want it to be taken seriously. So I just continued to write. And thankfully, um, D'Angela Proctor was running TV one in 2014. And she asked for a script like a sex in the city meets girlfriends. And I was like, hmm, OK, what about this? Mm. She reads the script. She goes, mm, but I like that one character, the born again version. I was like. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Like, who wants to see a show about somebody not getting any? Right. What are we doing? Right. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I'm just telling you what I want. Turns out, yeah. 
Yeah. Here we go. Um, I sold it as a non-union pilot in 2014, and here we are, ten years later. Ten years later, because that show room yeah. was my room. And uh, I tell young writers all the time, your journey doesn't have to look like everybody else's, yeah. because I was caught up in that part of it, and it was a a more strict arena at that time where you had to like work your way in. Mm -hmm. And when God opens doors, God opens doors. All right. When we come forward, we she she already she already took you. Actually, we went from the beginning all the way to to where we are today. Where we are today. Um, this is so good. This is this is heating up the way that I knew it would and that I <laughs> wanted it to. Um, so you guys, when we come forward, we're gonna talk to Renata more, obviously, about her career, where uh, Born Again Virgin has landed her, where it has taken her, all the way to where we are today. The reason we are here, and it's not the reason. It's one of the bigger reasons we're here today, is to discuss this uh, highly debated show um, on Netflix, Good Times. It is such a good time. Okay, when we come forward, we'll talk with Renata Moore. On the other side, you are listening to The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Stay there. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Denzel Whitaker, and I'm on The Raw Report. You're inside The Raw Report the Raw. with Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. Always night pads are designed for a perfect night's sleep. So you can do your bear hugging a pillow thing, your free falling starfish thing, your burrito in a blanket with the AC blasting thing. While always night pads with rapid dry technology do their, we've got your back with fast absorbency and up to 10 hours of protection thing. So while your period's doing its own thing, always let you do your sleep freely with a heavy flow thing. Find always pads at your local Target store or online. One in three children born today will get diabetes. This sad prediction by the Centers for Disease Control will come true if millions of Americans don't improve their lifestyles, especially by changing what they eat, how much they eat, and how active they are every day. Every 23 seconds, another American gets diabetes. Stop diabetes before it starts. To learn more, contact the American Diabetes Association or download our free diabetes education programs at learningaboutdiabetes.org. My ride smells just right, just right, just right, just right. Y'all gotta try that for Bree's right, car. Just right, just right, just right, just right. La 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 la. With up to 40 days of consistent sin, all over Bree's car clips right on your vent. Yeah, you yeah. know my car's my happy place. Keep that smile on my face. When it smells just right, just right. KBLA Talk 1580, home of the 2024 Climate Justice Campaign. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment through the arts. Dia Chucha Central Cultural is on a mission to transform community in the Northeast San Fernando Valley and beyond through ancestral knowledge, the arts, literacy, and creative engagement. The Northeast San Fernando Valley has a population of about 500,000, the size of the city of Oakland, yet it has no bookstores, art galleries, or full-fledged cultural spaces until Tia Chuchas opened its doors in 2001. Founded by renowned poet and activist Luis Rodriguez, Tia Chuchas Cultural Center provides a year-round free or low-cost arts and literacy bilingual intergenerational programming in mural painting, music, dance, writing, visual arts, healing art sessions, and healing talking circles. Activities also include Mexica, Aztec dance, indigenous cosmology, philosophy, and two weekly open mic nights, one in Spanish, the other in English. In addition, they host author readings, film screenings, and art exhibits. To express yourself, heal yourself, attend an event, or volunteer, please visit www.tiachucha.org. That's T-I-A-C-H-U-C-H-A dot org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Giving you your daily dose of entertainment and celebrity news. You're inside the Robert the Report. Report. With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. 1580. And, of course, I am not here alone. Today I have the honor of having my very special guest, Renata Shepard, in the studio Hello. with me today. So, so, so happy to finally have you here, Renata. Um, We're long overdue. We've been trying to do this for a minute. I know. I mean, it's, we've done some things here and there, but not, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. It would have been a little different. 
it would have been different. I think timing is everything. It is. Timing means is. so much. And I, and I wonder, um, even for yourself, looking back over your career and all of the things that we just talked about, you were surrounded by all these greats. Um, time. Mm -hmm. You needed the time and you wouldn't have anybody who was just going to give you something. You mm -hmm. had to go through all of the different measures. You had to get your put some skin in the game in order to become, you know, who you are now. Um, oh, yeah. That, that must be you must be so appreciative of oh, of that. Absolutely. Because it's about preparation at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, even though you're coming in a different way and people think, oh, it looks and feels easy. It's just hard in different ways. And so I was getting training through the people that were around me, the, my husband I'm married to, Allison Faust, who's my mentor and my work wife and my best friend. And um, through those two alone, I was just exposed to so many different writers and creators. And, you know, there is a fortitude because these are old school writers. And I don't mean old school as in old people. I'm saying as in they went through a program that looks completely different mm -hmm. than today mm -hmm. where you had to earn your stripes a different way, where there wasn't um, an admiration for black people and black excellence and black girl magic. It was just like, you really shouldn't be here. Mm. You know, and I don't want to speak for them, but I've heard enough stories sure. yeah. where Devon has, you know, been told to his face like, I don't really like people from South Central, so wow. you should yeah. probably you should probably smile if you're gonna come here every day. You know, mm -hmm. um, in spaces in sitcoms, some of our very favorite sitcoms, mm -hmm. where he was at, he would be told you couldn't be in the story room. We'll come to you when we need slang. Oh wow! So the That's evolution what it looked like back then it, yeah. it was it was tough. Yeah. So to have conversations with them and come home mad because somebody didn't like my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right. <laughs> you be all right. Keep you, pitching. You are you are gonna be all right. You know now that you because you've gone through that and you've seen it and, and heard uh, firsthand how how are you different? How do you show up differently now that you're in that position where I'm sure so many people I've even had people uh, tell me personally knowing that I know you mm -hmm. they're like I would love to pitch your brain I would love to you know what I mean yeah uh, pick her brain. That type of thing, and I'm sure you get that a lot. Mm -hmm. How are you showing up for uh, other writers? And um, is it the same type of thing? Do you still believe that? Okay, earn your stripes, or are you saying come close and then uh, learn a bit, learn a little bit from me? Yeah, I don't take on anything that didn't actually happen, so I don't take on their experience as if like, nah, I had it hard, so you have to have mm -hmm. it hard. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I had a different experience, and so the only thing I can gift you with is preparation as much as I can, mm -hmm. because it's great. And I tell young writers this all the time and young I mean not by age I mean by your first few experiences mm -hmm. as great as it was to go from a non-union pilot to a straight to series television show where yeah. it's like this is created by Renata Shepard oh my gosh say less I've made it mm. and you get in that room and although you are the the point of vision for the show everybody in there including the writer's assistant knows more than you about the rules and the way all this goes mm -hmm. and so on one hand you're up here mm -hmm. and then you're struggling with just imposter syndrome and insecurities in the worst way mm -hmm. of like i know the least this is horrible and so in that moment i i try to prepare people like it's gonna feel disgusting because mm -hmm. you know you just don't know where to sit in it and you can't let your ego get a hold of you but what you have to do is tell yourself you're never gonna be in this position again i'll never be in a room where i know the least great point very Let me just point. figure this out because, yeah. you know, yeah, it hurts, but so what? What do you say for, for people who might hear that and they say, you know what, um, I know you went through that, but kind of maybe you had people around you to help bring you through. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, what do you say in response to that? I say if you're in that position, reach out to me. Reach out to Allison Fowles. Re reach out to Devon Shepard. I know, you know, the Yvette Lee Bowsers of the world. Mm -hmm. um, like, what a gift that we want to continue to share, that we want to continue, and I don't even place myself with these legends, but also like as a person who's gone through it, mm -hmm. I want to hold somebody's hand and let you know you're going to be okay. Yeah. Because it is the scariest thing. Mm -hmm. Listen, on Born Again Version, Allison had to leave two weeks early to get back here for ABC show, and we were in production in Atlanta, and I had to do 
the last two weeks by myself. Now, I had already had probably like two months with her, mm -hmm. but she just took the training wheels off in the worst way. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I would be up at night. Like, did I shoot that scene? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Should I shoot an extra scene tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Because once we take it to the editing bay, what you have is what you have. Yeah. And yeah. I would rather at that stage of my career overshoot and shoot something that wasn't even in the script to make sure all bases are covered. And they were looking at me like, <laughs> I mean, she wants to do it, okay. And I was yeah, like, yeah. just let me do it. Because if we get back there and I don't have it or this doesn't make sense, I'm going to fall apart. Did you ever have to uh, find yourself back in that position again? So, like, she took the training wheels off in those two months? Did you say two weeks? Two, two weeks. weeks. Did those two weeks sort of inform how you were going to be as a showrunner uh, in the future? Or were you still like, you know, um, I'm still going to need some help. Like, and that's okay. Yeah, I need still that. needed help. Yeah. There's no yeah. way you can do that in one show yeah. that quickly. Um so the next couple of projects I was supervised and then um, because I went on to sell more projects that mm -hmm. were written by me and created by me. Mm -hmm. So um, and then it was like, let me go sit in other rooms. Let me actually go about mm -hmm. it this way, mm -hmm. because, you know, there is a part of your nervous system <laughs> that is just distraught when it's your baby. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to, let me just go help somebody else and see how other people do it outside of Devon and Allison. Yes. Let okay. me go Great work mm -hmm. on the Lizzie McGuire reboot. Let me go work on connecting. Let me go work on Diary of a Future President. Mm -hmm. And that was incredible mm -hmm. because, you know, you can relax to take it in. You're not just like, oh, my God. So, okay, is everything okay? Is everything okay? No. You're <laughs> yes. just like, oh, okay, wow. Yeah, I, I'm, I see where I'm strong to help you with your project. Mm -hmm. I see that my strong suit in your room is actually breaking stories. In this room, it was actually laying out the season art, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, mm -hmm. um, which was so beneficial to me to be able to see just where I stood and where I could hold weight and where I could help and support mm -hmm. people. I'm glad that you, you mentioned that because you do, I, I say this all the time, um, no matter where I go from here, mm -hmm. I know that I've learned every facet of what I what it is that I do. Mm -hmm. I've learned it all. And I know that that's all going to come into play in the future, right? Yeah. So for you, I'm glad that you weren't handed, you know, just the reins and that you um, had to actually go through and chose, I'm, I'm sure you still mm -hmm. chose to go through um, the path that you did so that it could prepare you for where you ha where you are now. Yes. Um, and speaking of where you are now, <laughs> uh, good times. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. It is, first of all, <laughs> obviously, um, there's so much to talk about with this. Um, you know, I'm just so curious as to, you know, all the, you know, you had this beautiful sort of career that was that was panning out for you. And it, it seemed like beautiful. Yay, Renata. <laughs> and then it's just like all of a sudden you're a part of this, this, this huge, you know, show and huge conversation mm -hmm. that had such debate and talk around it mm -hmm. were you even prepared once you did you did you guys is that something y'all talked about inside the the, the <laughs> writer's room and inside you know with your people is that did you guys talk about how this was going to uh land with the public no because you never know you never know you never know i've thought other situations were going to be extremely big i mean you know to be a part of the lizzie mcguire reboot yeah there is a fan base there that is just insane but yeah. beautiful and ginormous like they just wanted any little crumble that mm -hmm. they could get to the point where if i didn't return a dm they'd reach out to devon oh, okay. and go hey like i was in your wife's dms and lizzie got me through the worst of times and i'm trying to tell her and she's not really listening oh, wow <laughs> so that yeah. was a different fan base and so you and then of course we started that and then that stopped you know mm -hmm. due to change of creative direction by disney mm -hmm. so you didn't i just didn't know you just never know with television. Mm -hmm. There's so many great things that start off happening that we can talk about. I can mm -hmm. run into you and go, girl, I'm working on this mm -hmm. and never see the light of day. Right. So when we're in the room and um, even signing my deal, it's just like, OK, sure, let's this is great. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, I know personally, I've been hit up by so many different people who yes. have wanted to talk about this show. And I said, you know what, just for the sake of respecting, I said, 
I, I know Renata personally. I'm mm-hmm. going to have Renata on this show, and I'm going to reserve my comments for this show. So it's going to be a full discussion. Okay. Um, and people have been hitting me up. Y'all have been DMing me. You have been emailing <laughs> me. I hear everything. Y'all been calling Andy. Everybody, we hear you, and she is here. We are going to talk about yes. good times, all of it, the good, the bad. It's not no no bad. There is no bad. But we're going to talk about it all Yeah. Um, and, and bring this whole thing full circle. And if you have not given it a chance... That's the first thing. I want to start there. If you haven't given it a chance, you must watch it because it is now airing on Netflix. I've watched. I I, I just absolutely. I'll reserve my comments for when I come back. You guys, uh, right now, you are listening to The Raw Report. But right now, we've got news, traffic, and sports. You're listening to The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Stay right there. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Lil Real. How are you? Right now, you're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. That's right. The Raw Report. More of, More of The Raw Report. Report with Robin Ayers when we come forward. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. Trinity College President Joanne Berger Sweeney is planning to retire from the position in June of next year. Berger Sweeney became the first woman and first African American woman to be president of Trinity when she took the position in 2014. Officials at the Hartford School say an immediate search is being launched to find her successor. Cleveland City Council members Richard Starr and Kevin Conwell have joined with those calling for the city to fire the newly selected city safety advisor. The Cleveland NAACP called for the termination of Philip McHugh, citing a 2016 lawsuit in which McHugh was accused of violating the civil rights of an elderly black couple while working as a police detective in Washington, D.C. That suit was eventually settled for six figures. Starr and Conwell called for McHugh's removal, though the city continues to stand by the hiring. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. Drive carefully over in Southgate as an accident is currently blocking the second lane from the left of the 710 North before Firestone Boulevard. An attempt to 15-minute traffic jam is from the 91 freeway. Over in Long Beach, a stall is currently blocking the right lane to the 405 South before Bellflower Boulevard. And heavy traffic is coming from Cherry Avenue on the south side. Making our way through downtown, accidents been cleared from the 101 North at Mission Road with a stop delay from the 5, just under 10 minutes. And in Orange, traffic jam continues on the 57 North between Orangewood Avenue and Chapman. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Their end-to-end solution helps you attract, interview, and hire candidates all year round. Schedule and conduct virtual interviews right from your Indeed dashboard. Learn more by visiting Indeed.com slash credit. Is this the title? This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The attorney handling O.J. Simpson's estate has changed his mind about paying the civil lawsuit settlement to the families of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Malcolm Laverne, an attorney in Las Vegas, said last week after Simpson's death that the families would not get any part of the $33.5 million judgment that was awarded in 1995. None of the money has been given to the families after a judge ruled in their favor in the wrongful death lawsuit against Simpson. Laverne said he would begin the process of payments to the families based on Nevada law. Laverne did not disclose if Simpson's estate had enough money to cover the $33.5 million. Former Clippers star Blake Griffin announced his retirement today. Griffin played eight of his 13 NBA seasons with the Clippers. He was a major attraction in the Clippers' Lob City era after the Clippers drafted him in 2009. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk be sure to follow us on Instagram at KBLA1580. Are you ready? The station leading the way with exclusive interviews, stimulating conversation, and intellectual discourse that empowers, enlightens, and informs. Follow the leader at KBLA1580. We've got a lot to talk about. We keep following the leader. Follow 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 the leader. We ask seniors how to prevent Medicare scams. My best advice, if you get a phone call, do not talk to the person. These people are well-trained. Don't talk to them. They don't know me. They're just trying to scam me. Don't be fooled. Hang up. Just hang up. Never give out your Medicare number. They're going to get your number to put in a false claim. If I get a call from someone, I don't pick up the phone. And should I pick up the phone and ask for information, then I hang up. How do you detect Medicare fraud? 
Just like I check my credit card statements, I check my Medicare statements monthly. Scammers can get a hold of your number, order medical devices through your account, and you're not even going to know about it if you don't look at your statement. Check your statement every month. If you get your statement and you see something that you know you did not have done, you report it. Call your senior Medicare patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 855-613-7080. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Stay Housed LA has the resources you need to know your rights and the legal support to back them up. The COVID-19 pandemic has cost people their jobs and livelihoods. This has left an estimated one-third of households not being able to make rent and facing losing their homes. This is a fear no one in our community should have to face. You have rights, though, and Stay Housed LA is here to help. Stay Housed LA is a partnership between the County of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles, and local community and legal service providers. Together, they provide tenants with the information and support needed to exercise their rights so they can remain safely in their homes. Find out more about your rights by participating in a virtual tenant workshop. Get the legal assistance you need. Find additional resources in Los Angeles County and the City of Los Angeles. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA County for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. That's stayhousedla.org. Or call their hotline at 213-694-0040. We've got your black with a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio that's music to your ears. Ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. Keeping you informed about what's really going on. Who's got next? And what not to miss in entertainment. You're listening to The Raw Report Report. on KBLA Talk 1580. We're inside the Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. We are in a, in a, in a you know, slow motion, slow jamming mood today. Andy, thank you so much for the vibes. I appreciate you. If you're just joining us, welcome on into the Raw Report. Um, we have a very special treat today because we are sitting with Renata Shepard, my dear friend, what who up? happens to be... <laughs> The goat. Not just because she is. <laughs> she is the co-creator, the showrunner, um, writer. There's all these things. She's a part of this wonderful show. I personally feel like it is. Uh, it is definitely a wonderful show and worth the watch. You guys, if you haven't yet, I see 50% of you have watched it. 50% of you haven't. I okay. hope after this conversation, the remainder uh, of you guys, I hope that you tune in to Netflix and watch it. Give it a chance. Um, regardless of what you've been hearing about watching or seeing about and um, all the people commenting on social media surrounding the trailer, um, regardless of that, you have to give it a shot because there's more to it. Um, in, in speaking of the trailer, we have it. <laughs> oh, you want to hear? It's the clean. The we cleaned it up. Comes. We cleaned it up. But no, <laughs> let's go ahead. If you have not heard it yet, you don't know what we're talking about. Let's play the trailer for Good Times, the animated reboot. I have important news. Let me guess. The state called and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy now? <laughs> me for not wearing a condom. Woo! Shadows fall over my heart. It all started with my grandfather, James Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. I just want to let you know I'm going to take good care of Gray. Daddy, let him go. Baby, you should come with me. Junior's repeating the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through Can you do OnlyFans? Take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. I'll take you to the dark side. Dear Black Heavenly Father. Color 
Judge Redeemer, uh! If you could just help us. Son, it's for you. New phone, who this? Back everything. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Hmm, man, my mouth ready for some milk right now. Dalvin, why are you so breast obsessed? It's childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. In a nocturnal state of mind. Your neighborhood is a real s hole. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. Underneath this black, black sky. This is getting dangerous. I'm going to just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. I love you too damn much. Everything, everything black. The revolution will not be televised. Come on, Rosa Paws. Can't you just enjoy this? Just as good as the Evans of old. Isn't that just dynamite? But the truth is, we're the Evans of new. You look like money. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Everything black, black bird, black moon, black sky, black light, black, everything black. Wait a minute. The baby? Little baby? And baby baby? Too many babies around this crib. <laughs> Come on. That is a wonderful trailer. <laughs> that trailer. I love that. That trailer. trailer is so good that it did what it needed to do, which was cause a stir. Whatever people were talking about, do you believe that all publicity is good publicity, like they say? Um, how did you feel? You know, um, instantly just all the all the talk around the trailer well you know initially you just want your people to love it like yeah. you love it and then you start to think am i too close to this um so there is a bit of like oh no and then it's um the gift of this is art you step back it's not about love mm. or not love this is art and people are having conversations today right now on the youtube space mm -hmm. um that they weren't having three weeks ago and for that alone, let's have these conversations and that I'm grateful for because I really had to stop my ego for a second and go, wait, you didn't do this so people would love it. When you do adult animation and social commentary, mm -hmm. you do it to stir up conversations mm -hmm. and create a space where people get to say, I don't, I don't like that. And then we actually pull back a couple of layers and go, well, why do we do that? Or why do we respond that way? Or why do we tolerate that from the white people, the system, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, glad that you made that that point um, that you had to step back. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm glad about that. Um, the point that you are sitting at right now, do mm -hmm. you understand why there's backlash? Do you understand? Yes, yes. You get it. I understand um, in this way. A photo was put out of images um, from the show. Just images were put out there. Mm -hmm. it, we didn't hold anyone's hand. There was no framing. We weren't on couches all across America talking about this show. It was just images put out, and it said, good time's coming soon. Mm -hmm. Then two weeks later, there's a trailer, and then it's coming April 12th. Mm -hmm. So I particularly understand without the framing, without our talent sitting on couches, sitting at the desk with view, you know, like that's the kind of handholding that I do believe is necessary for a project like this. Mm. Okay. So would you have uh, rolled it out any differently, or do you actually? I mean, if somebody's right. gonna contribute, you got some money. <laughs> <laughs> and in all fairness, this mm -hmm. is post strike, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. The, the business isn't looking the way it looked when I started this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I, you just are. We're all like adjusting to this new Hollywood post strike. Yeah. And so I understood it, and I still understand, but I also know that. Even if it wasn't um, a show that was going to challenge people, it still was a reimagination of good times. Mm -hmm. And that alone deserves a framing. And you have some heavy hitters attached I to this show. I, I um, mean, heavy hitters. They are wonderful. Um, Jay Farrell, let's talk about Marse Martin, Yvette Nicole Brown, uh, JB Smooth, your husband. I mean, we've got, there's so many people who are attached to the show Tisha Campbell, Chris Summers. Um, have you ever gotten everything you wanted for Christmas? Like everything on your list? I don't know if I have. That's what this feels like to me. Mm. Like, I got 
everybody I wanted. Wow. Like, thank you. Thank you to our friends. Some of them are friends. Thank you to the people who trusted me. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who still stands by my side to say we're so proud of this work. Mm -hmm. What a dream come true. You don't see a cast like that. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm so grateful because everybody's so special and everybody adds something in a special way. And I'll just jump right in to say my JB Smooth, mm -hmm. my JB Smooth. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is <laughs> so incredible in, in a sense that you know, I didn't have a father. My father was big in stature, like mm -hmm. Reggie, mm -hmm. but also like hardworking and frustrated and pissed at us all the mm -hmm. time because he had to go back and drive an hour and 45 minutes to O'Hare Airport to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're in that struggle as a parent, you're really just trying to make sure these lights stay on, this food stays on the table, and these kids do what I say do. So now, now that you hit that, and yes, yeah, shout out to J.B. Smooth. Yes. Uh, 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 J.B. Smooth is... Say, yes, yes, please. He provided a vulnerability to that character that I'm forever grateful for. Mm. That we don't get to see in fathers. You are right about that, Renata. Yeah. You are right about that. He loves his family and he loves his wife, there's no doubt. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go with okay. this. This show really is about family. Mm -hmm. It's about love. Mm -hmm. um, you do see struggle, mm -hmm. but but frame it for us. Those people, the fifty percent of you guys who have not tuned into this show yet, frame it. Do, okay, you, yeah. yeah. Let you me could, take you back a second. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this reimagining of good times is actually um, JJ's son is Reggie, played by JB Smooth, and Reggie along with his wife Beverly Evans. Uh, played by Yvette Nicole Brown, they're raising the fourth generation Evans mm -hmm. to be in this apartment unit 17C, the last standing project in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we know the projects have been torn down. Um, and I will say, let me start here. This project was so prior to me. Mm -hmm. So this project had been going on for like a year and a half, almost two years. So these characters were set in place, mm -hmm. the city, the projects were set in place. And I the project had come to an halt, a halt and Sony called me and asked me to jump on mm. to keep it moving and get it to air. Okay. Land the plane. I said, I'll land the plane. That is what I did. And so I took over, kept the same characters intact, but changed storylines and added layers. Um, there were some things that were just, oh, because that's funny. And it's like, no, we need more context, context and subtext in order to make this work. So with that being said, this family was pretty much in place. Mm -hmm and the setting was in place. I made it very specific to tie it to the original Evans family. Mm -hmm. It was um, loosely tied when I first got there and um, thought, okay, well, what would this look like in 2024? Mm -hmm. And not in a sense of um, only poverty, it's really what does systemic oppression look like in 2024? The truth of the matter is I could move them out next week and i can still ask you that same question mm -hmm. what a systemic oppression look like in 2024 mm -hmm. it doesn't stop yeah. it may change based on where you live but we're talking about dei programs yeah. being exactly canceled exactly. every we'll day yeah. um that is the nature of this country mm -hmm. and when you get into chicago which is one of the most segregated cities in the united states mm -hmm. that is the nature of that city mm -hmm. it is a looming feeling of knowing that you're up against what you're up against mm -hmm. and so i really wanted to look at what stories would we be telling because the original good times was near and dear to my heart and i love the stories that came out of it so how do we get to tell stories today but also this show was already sold as an adult animation okay so let's be clear mm -hmm. seth mcfarland steph curry normally they've already gone in rooms and sold this to netflix mm -hmm. renata mm -hmm. is coming in a year and a half to two years later to reset it mm -hmm. and get it on its feet mm -hmm. with uh we don't have a lot of time and we don't have a lot of money mm -hmm. you got this yeah and i don't say that to make excuses for myself mm -hmm. i say that to set the scene of yes where we were yeah. and how it functioned so immediately i staffed up a room um the only talent that was attached was yvette nicole brown and slink johnson as dalvin oh wow okay Cree summer was attached as voice director shout out to her mm -hmm. and ninth wonder uh, was mm -hmm. attached okay. for music as executive producer of our music. Nice. So those were gifts set in place, and now I needed to figure out the rest of the cast and the stories we were going to tell. Mm -hmm. um, your husband, Devon Shepard, <laughs> he did such a great job um, in conversation. He was bringing up all the all the shows. I mean, we mm -hmm. have, there's we have such a rich history. Mm -hmm. um, 
But some of those shows that that are in our history have caught backlash before. Mm -hmm. This isn't the first time, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But some of them have have come full circle and become classics, Mm -hmm. right? But it seemed as though black people, we're always talking to our community. Yes. why the outrage? Why why make it sound as though you don't understand roaches in a in an apartment? Why make it sound like you know people? The the, the conversation is why haven't we progressed? But in many ways, watching this show, we have. Oh, we've so progressed. We have. We have so progressed. Yeah. Um, you know, in real life, we progressed, and in good times, world, yes. we progressed. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys recall one of the original episodes. Uh. Florida wanted to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And James told her, it's only two places a woman belongs, the kitchen and the bedroom, Florida, the kitchen and the bedroom. (laughs) I know this Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. my husband and I go back and forth on this constantly Mm -hmm. as a joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But I say that to say, uh, we're talking about Beverly Evans in this first season of The Reimagination, and she's the president of the projects. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about showing a woman um, in a way where she can do it all. And she isn't just um, fighting to get out of the role of the domestic space. Mm -hmm. This woman can do it all. She knows she can do it all. She runs against it. And she wins in the craziest of ways if you've watched Mm -hmm. it. But also, (laughs) um, she's running the family. And the gift that Yvette Nicole Brown brought to Beverly Evans is so great in the sense that she encapsulated the black mother. You know, like there, there's just the nuances of how she speeds up and lowers her tone and goes high. And you just go, oh, my God, like mm. it's triggering and it's beautiful at the same <laughs> time. Like, am I about to get in trouble? Um, but also she comes from a place of love. These are good people who are behind these yes, characters. And yeah. I'm so grateful for that. Um, Jay Farrell, the man of a million voices. Listen, I needed a Jay-Z. I needed a Rick Ross. I needed whatever in Kanye, Drake, whatever. And he's in there giving it all to me. Baby, little baby. Yeah. The baby. Yeah. Like, he can just do so many things. And what a gift to have him as in an animation. Oh, yeah. And we're talking Marce Martin, who's coming from the world of Disney, and said she had this on her list, praying that she would be able to do adult animation one day. Oh, wow. And was so grateful when she read the script, but also, like, getting edgy for the first time dipping her toe in that water okay we have a we have a call i, w- I want to get to that call but on the other side um so all right we'll, we'll wrap this all up on the other side this is such a great conversation and renata i'm yes. so happy that you're giving context for yes. everybody who's listening um stay with us you guys you're listening to kbla talk 1580 yo what's going on it's your boy eric bellinger hanging out right here with my family at the raw report keep it locked you're inside the raw report <laughs> With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abby. There are many healthcare organizations serving our community. Not all are dedicated to community partnerships that educate, build trust, inspire hope, and improve outcomes. Providence has a robust community outreach program and has dedicated $50 million over the next five years to support organizations addressing health disparities in local communities of color. Examples of this commitment include the Biddy Mason Community Wellness Center on the first AME campus, providing medical screenings, mental health therapy, nutrition, and culturally sensitive holistic classes. 
The Black Mamas Glow and Peer Support Group that focuses on maternal mental health, birth planning, and social support. Providence is committed to building trusted partnerships with community organizations to better understand and dismantle structural, racial, and cultural barriers to better health. During Minority Health Month, Providence is sponsoring Health for a Better World. Informative conversations with Providence health professionals on Urban Family Focus every Saturday in April at 7 a.m. To find a Providence Health System facility near you, log on to Providence.org. This is KBLA Talk 1580, home of the 2024 Climate Justice Campaign. Giving you your daily dose of entertainment and celebrity news. You're inside the Robert the Report. Report. With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. 1580. So let's go ahead and get to this call from Forrest from Compton. Hello to you, Forrest. You're hey, here with you Renata doing? Shepherd. Hey, Forrest. Miss Shepherd, how are you? I'm pretty good. You how know, are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I, I just called to offer you some encouragement uh, as far as, you know, back in the day, you know, people are going to give you some pushback because of the content of the show and or whatever. But back in the day, there was a show called uh, Homeboys from Outer Space that, you know, black folks complained about, and it got cut off the air fairly quickly. And then they turned around and a show called Third Rock from the Sun, Mm -hmm. which is basically the same show, ran for six six seasons. Mm -hmm. So basically, as people, if they start pushing back or, or, you know, talking crap about it, just, you know, be encouraged to keep going. Mm. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you so much, Forrest. We appreciate you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Enjoy your night. Um, Renata, we, we I, I keep telling you, this show goes by so fast. Um, let's touch on Dalvin. Let's talk about Dalvin. Dalvin Slink is Johnson. the little bit, yeah. <laughs> Slink Johnson, great job. <laughs> uh, the, the drug dealing baby. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about him. Yeah. So what's interesting is he was part of the original family basis that I told you guys I it was already set in place and it was sold. And I was told that um, it was from the uh, Dave Chappelle joke of seeing a baby on the street and people thought that was funny and that's what it was that personally wasn't enough for me to keep it um i had to find a a place of understanding and compassion for us and the community to make it make sense Mm. so you know i i say this to bring up one of the worst moments in our history um george floyd Mm -hmm. and i say to you when that man was laying on the ground god bless his soul what did he say mama Mm. Mm-hmm. That was somebody's baby. And I don't care if they're 55, 65, 35, 25, 5. Mm-hmm. That's somebody's baby. Mm-hmm. And we see this all the time. I live this with my kids. Those are my babies. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, the United States and society decides they will, you know, just um, in the best of ways make the gangsters cool and. Uh, glorify them in every way if it's Italian gangsters in the mob or if it's narcos or if it's even mm-hmm. the white collar Wall Street right mm-hmm. it, it all makes sense and it's all cool and suave until it's our men mm-hmm. and suddenly it's so problematic and they are the biggest threats in society and if I can use this baby character to remind you that is always somebody's baby even if he's doing the worst of things, even if he is selling drugs, mind you, he's a conscious drug dealer who's selling to white people only, mm-hmm. Oxycontin, cocaine, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that's right, but what I'm saying is put a, a problematic baby in the house mm-hmm. and suddenly we can find a place of compassion and look at that. Or maybe society can mm-hmm. because the husband or the father always says enough of this. He has to get out of this house. Mm-hmm. The siblings are like, why are you always letting them back? And it's the mother who says, that's my, my baby. baby. Mm-hmm. We all have seen this role, whether it's the gang member, the drug dealer, whatever it is in our families, in our households, we have seen this play out. And so I wanted to explore this and I, I did not want to put drugs in Junior's hands. I didn't want to make him the drug dealer because that would fit what they see and believe about our teenage boys. Mm-hmm. But let's do it at, with the baby. That's Something why. Something just outrageous too. Yeah. But also, I'm glad you said outrageous. Mm-hmm. It's adult animation. Exactly. And if you are not yeah. a fan of adult animation, I understand that and I respect that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the genre alone requires you to be absurd. Mm-hmm. It requires you to be up loud, inappropriate. I mean, I don't know if you guys are aware, but you watch these other adult animation shows and it can be problematic. And I say that to say, this is groundbreaking for me to be in this position mm-hmm. as a black woman. Mm-hmm. That You know, adult animation is a white man's world. Mm-hmm. And we are 
Ooh. trying to get in these rooms. But for me to be running this room and Ooh. running this space, you better believe I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it right. Yes, so it is yes. going to be edgy and absurd, but it's also going to be love with love and care. Yes, yes. Well said, Renata. I think that 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 bring, that brought it back around exactly to where we needed it to be. Andy, did you want to uh, jump in? Come on, Andy. I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, people be tripping over shows. Mm-hmm. Oh, hold on. Remember Beavis and Butthead? Yes. yes. South Park? Yes. Yeah, of I'm course. just saying, those are adult cartoons. Yes, Why can't course. we have ours? And that is, we've been fighting for so long to be in this space. You know, there was Cleveland Brown and went away. And let me be very clear with you guys. Seth MacFarlane is an executive producer on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, he has never given me notes. He has never written a word on this show. Mm -hmm. He was there for the sale of the show. I was not even there for the sale of the show. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he has not been involved in the process since I have came on board. Yeah. So we're not going to blame Seth MacFarlane. If you don't like the material it's okay to say we're not i don't like what sure, you did sure and i can respectfully accept that or we can engage in a conversation but if you can't get past the roach in the first scene then you haven't seen enough mm -hmm. because we're talking about real things real things we're talking yeah, yeah. about deep issues about you know the corruption in the city of chicago where you know they make money off of these young boys. Every city, they make young money off of these boys killing each other. From the funeral homes, to the flowers, to the medics, to the police officers doing overtime to write up the report, to the trauma unit, to the prison who actually gets the other one who lived. Like, let's really talk about this. Let's talk about why do we want, why do we allow pandering in our community when it's election season? Wow. Let's talk about black women and their reproductive organs and their menstrual cycles and shedding the shame around that. Because I'll tell you right now, when Roe versus Wade was overturned, who are we seeing in those courtrooms who are up against a murder trial because they miscarried? Our women, mm -hmm. women who look like us are sitting there terrified because they miscarried and they may be up for murder. We gotta reverse that. We gotta get involved and shed the shame. But that's what this show does. Yeah. It sparks these conversations. It does. You know what? It's so well said. It does. Uh, that's what that's what we go and watch television uh, television series for. Yes. Movies for is to spark conversation. Yes. And so at the end of the day, after you guys finish watching Netflix, let's talk um, about please, it. Please let's continue the conversation. Renata Shepard, I love yes. you so much. I, I am proud too. of you. You are killing the game. Thank Continue you. to bring us. Uh, all the great content that Thank you will. You. We appreciate you guys so much. Listen, uh, Raw Squad, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all the engagement. I'm sorry I wasn't able to read the comments. But listen, stay tuned. Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, is up next. I am Robin Ayers. And remember, today and every day forward, be a blessing. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. Fisk University's Morgan Price made history as the first gymnast from an HBCU to win a national championship. She clinched the all-around gymnastics title and earned 2024 USAG First Team All-American honors for floor exercise, vault, uneven bars, and all-around. O.J. Simpson's executor is backtracking on previous statements regarding the Goldman family's potential inheritance from Simpson's estate. Initially expressing hope that the Goldmans would receive nothing, attorney Malcolm Laverne, who is black, now states that Fred Goldman's claim will be addressed according to 